The word of God says in Romans chapter 10, starting off in verse 14, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? These questions put forth by Paul are rhetorical in nature. Notice what he says. How shall they preach except they be sent? Now, the obvious answer is they can't. And that's his point. How shall they hear without a preacher? They can't. How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Again, they can't. Notice this. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Think about that. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not first what? Believed. The obvious answer is, again, they can't, signifying that the believer is calling upon the name of the Lord, not the unbeliever. And that is imperative to understand. The believer is calling upon the name of the Lord. Faith precedes confession, and faith is what makes a man righteous, meaning that the saved man is calling upon the Lord for salvation, for deliverance. And this is why Paul distinguishes between the righteousness resulting from faith with the heart and the salvation resulting from confession with the mouth. Watch this. If believing precedes calling, and it does, and believing is what makes a man righteous, and it does, then the righteous man is calling upon the name of the Lord. Don't miss that. Calling upon the name of the Lord is an activity indicative of the believer, the righteous, the saved. I'll say this again. If believing precedes calling, if faith comes before confession, which it does, and believing is what makes a man righteous, then the righteous man is calling upon the name of the Lord. The believer is calling upon the Lord. The saved man is calling upon the name of the Lord. Now, you either concede to that truth and admit that, yes, man is saved the moment he believes with the heart prior to confession, prior to calling, or you deny that and deal with the doctrinal consequences, which is what? A believer that isn't saved. Think about what you are implying. Salvation is invalid or incomplete until confession is made with the mouth or the sinner praise a prayer. My friend, that is another gospel. There is one condition to receive eternal life, and that is faith in Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house, period. 